Hello and welcome back to my vlog and happy Good Friday to you. Of course every Friday should be a Good Friday but this one's with a capital G I suppose. Part 16, the practice of auto-suggestion by the method of Emile Coué, revised edition by C. Harry Brooks, section 3, the practice of auto-suggestion, chapter 11, conclusion, part 1. Induced auto-suggestion is not a substitute for medical practice. It will not make us live forever. Neither will it free us completely from the common ills of life. What it may do in the future, when all its implications have been realized, all its resources exploited, we cannot say. There is no doubt that a generation brought up by its canons would differ profoundly from the disease-ridden population of today. But our immediate interest is with the present. The adult of today carries in his unconscious a memory clogged with a mass of adverse suggestions which have been accumulating since childhood. The first task of induced autosuggestion will be to clear away this mass of mental lumber. Not until this has been accomplished can the real man appear and the creative powers of autosuggestion begin to manifest themselves. By the use of this method, method, each one of us should be able to look forward to a life in which disease is a diminishing factor. But how great a part it will play depends upon the conditions we start from and the regularity and correctness of our practice. Should disease befall us, we possess within a potent means of expelling it. But this does not invalidate the complementary method of destroying it from without. Auto-suggestion and the usual medical practice should go hand in hand, each supplementing the other. If you are ill, call in your doctor as before, but enlist the resources of induced auto-suggestion to reinforce and extend his treatment. In this connection, it must be insisted on that auto-suggestion should be utilized for every ailment, whatever its nature, and whether its inroads be grave or slight. Every disease is either strengthened or weakened by the action of the mind. We cannot take up an attitude of neutrality. Either we must aid the disease to destroy us by allowing our minds to dwell on it, or we must oppose it and destroy it by a stream of healthful, dynamic thought. Too frequently, we spontaneously adopt the former course. The general opinion that functional and nervous diseases alone are susceptible to suggestive treatment is at variance with the facts. During Kuei's 30 years of practice, in which many thousands of cases have been treated, he has found that organic troubles yield as easily as functional, that bodily derangements are even easier to cure than nervous and mental. He makes no such distinctions. An illness is an illness, whatever its nature. As such, Kuei attacks it, and in 98% of cases, he attains, in greater or less degree, a positive result. Apart from the permanently insane, in whose mind the machinery of auto-suggestion is itself deranged, there are only two classes of patient with whom induced auto-suggestion seems to fail. One consists of persons whose intelligence is so low that the directions given are never comprehended. The other of those who lack the power of voluntary attention and cannot devote their minds to an idea even for a few consecutive seconds. These two classes, however, are numerically insignificant, together making up not much more than 2% of the population. Autosuggestion is equally valuable as an aid to surgical practice. A broken bone, the skeptic's last resource, cannot, of course, be treated by autosuggestion alone. A surgeon must be called in to mend it. But when the limb has been rightly set and the necessary mechanical precautions have been taken, autosuggestion will provide the best possible conditions for recovery. It can prevent lameness, stiffness, unsightly deformity, and the other evils which a broken limb is apt to entail, and it will shorten considerably the normal period of convalescence. It is sometimes stated that the results obtained by autosuggestion are not permanent. This objection is really artificial, arising from the fact that we ignore the true nature of autosuggestion and regard it merely as a remedy. When we employ autosuggestion to heal a malady, our aim is to leaven the unconscious with healthful thoughts that not only will that specific malady be excluded, but all others with it. Autosuggestion should not only remove a particular form of disease, but the tendency to all disease. If after an ailment has been removed, we allow our mind to revert to unhealthy thoughts, they will tend to realize themselves in the same way as any others, and we may again fall a victim to ill health. 
Our sickness may take the same form as on the preceding occasion, or it may not. That will depend on the nature of our thought. But by the regular employment of the general formula, we can prevent any such recurrence. Instead of reverting to unhealthy states of mind, we shall, we shall progressively strengthen the healthy and creative thought that has already given us health, so that with each succeeding day our defense will be more impenetrable. Not only do we thus avoid a relapse into former ailments, but we clear out of our path those which lie in wait for us in the future. And there, we will leave it for today. More tomorrow. Make it a great day, and bye for now.